Hello and welcome to Life Questions. I'm your host, Bill Harris. Do you have questions about life and its many complexities? Are you looking for answers? If so, we've, you have come to the right place. Many of our viewers have shared the same or similar concerns about life, and we know because you have written us and we have shared those concerns with a group of local ministers who've been searching the Bible for answers. They're here with us, and I'd like for you to meet them at this time. They are Reverend Ryan Benroth of the Well Apostolic Center and Healing Well Ministry, also Pastor Randy Coleman of Elida Emanuel Church, then there's Pastor Chris Ewing of the County Lion Church of the Brethren. And last, Pastor Estrella uh, Bassinet, right? Yes. Estrella Bassinet <laughs> of the Church of Revival Refuge. Thank you for your understanding on that. <laughs> We're happy to have you all with us today. You know, one of the big questions that we uh, continue to get here revolves around the issue of worry. Worry. And uh, this person here says that, um, how do you overcome worry? I read the Bible a lot, but I can't stop worrying about certain situations. Who wants to tackle that first? How do you attack worry? How do you deal with that? What are you telling your parishioners in the pul from the pulpit and in counseling sessions? Yeah. I usually uh, explore with people potential wound from the past mm, that... Mm -hmm started this belief because it's really believing a lie it's partnering with fear mm -hmm. and so when we're believing a lie then we're seeing things differently than the way God sees them so you know if we can go back and get that area of their heart healed up and then they're not looking through that lens of mm -hmm. woundedness and that fear of well it's not going to work out or if I get close to these people it's going to uh, they're just going to hurt me like all the others have. Mm -hmm. And so you get somebody healed up and set free of that when they're not agreeing with fear all the time, then there's less room for worry to mm -hmm. operate. You know, it's, it's tearing down a stronghold of thought mm -hmm. that is in opposition yeah. to the knowledge of God. Excellent. Very good. Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, I would say that you're in good company because everyone worries. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll worry about something. Uh, of course, we don't want to take that too far and become a chronic worrier yes. and be fearful. And, and that's what we don't uh, want in our lives. And um, whatever tendency, however high or however low that is, uh, we always, of course, need to take our worries and concerns to the Lord. Uh, scripture tells us to do yes, that. It does. Uh, Come to me, all you that labor are heavy laden. Jesus says, and I will give you rest there in Matthew chapter 11. It's a great passage. Uh, it is. And there's so many like that uh, to, to take all of our concerns and our cares to the Lord. Uh, and then I also find other things like support groups. And um, I have a band, a uh, group of guys that I get together with, and we pray. And when I'm able to take those needs to them, and we pray about them together. Uh, it's just a relieving type of type of uh, thing, sharing with somebody else and uh, sharing with uh, my wife in particular. She's very good at listening as well. So, yeah. How about you? Um, well, I usually um, I'm glad that you pointed out that you know the good company. Um, we need to understand that God gives us emotions and fears, and, and in, in a healthy way, it's the when they consume our life, that's when they go astray. I usually point people to when it's um, consuming their life um, to um, 2 Corinthians um, chapter 10, where it's talking about, you know, we do not fight against flesh and blood, but mm -hmm. principalities. And in verse 5, the latter part of it, it says that, um, and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So you want to take your thought, whatever worry that you're having, mm -hmm. and this goes into doubt, fear, all of those. Oh, yes. But we are taking that thought right there, and we are bringing it to the obedience of Christ. And how I always tell people to do that, you just start having a conversation with God about that, and you allow <clears> him <throat> to speak his truth to it. So... Um, we just need to really kind of walk with God in these things. And it's, you know, this journey of faith, this is a journey of growing. It's this journey of, you know, um, of just getting better with God. We don't want to beat ourselves up of, 
you know, but we just want God to be more present in our life. And that's kind of how we do. And then I go into what you were talking about. Well, why? You know, why have all these things? But okay, then let's take that thought of the why and then let's bring that on subjection under Christ. Mm -hmm. So, and then you wanted me to read. Now, okay, um, uh, let me uh, explain something to the people that they are um, here that um, everybody have worries. Christian, no Christian, mm -hmm. pastor, missionaries, <laughs> yes. right. human being. Right. But um, in the doctoral program in psychology, um, I learned about catastrophic mind. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a kind of mind that the people have mm -hmm. when the only thing that the people think is negative. Negative, mm -hmm. it's a catastrophic mind. Mm -hmm. But I, I am not going to speak about psychology here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, talk about how God shows me how, what I need to do yeah. to learn, mm -hmm. to say to my brain, don't worry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to say to my spirit, don't worry. How do you do that? Yeah. The secret is at the Bible. Okay. Read for me, uh, say that you are reading. Um, so I'm reading from the NASB, but it's Isaiah chapter 45, and you said verses 5 through 7? Yes. So 5 through 7, it says, I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I will gird you through, uh, though you have not known me, mm -hmm. that, um, that men may know, uh, know from the rising of the, the setting of the sun that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. The one forming light and creating darkness, causing well-being and creating calamity. I am the Lord who does all these. Okay. The secret is in, in that verse. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I am a Lord. I make the peace and I make the adversity. Mm -hmm. The problem with the worries is the fear mm -hmm. that the person feels. Yes. Mm -hmm. When you know that God, not the devil, mm -hmm. listen to me, God, not the devil, God made the adversity mm -hmm. and God made mm -hmm. the peace, you need to think the all problems that happen to me is from God. Yeah. And God has plans to me. Mm -hmm. yes. God has something um, beautiful to me, blessing to me. Mm -hmm. And then you understand that God is in control. Yeah. Ah. And, and this is the problem with our mind. Mm -hmm. We are thinking that it's the devil. Mm -hmm. Now God used to say, the devil doesn't have nothing in me. Mm -hmm. And you need to see that the devil doesn't have nothing in me. I am um, son of God. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, the fear go and the peace yeah. in, mm -hmm. go inside enter inside you yes. and you need to be still in the world yeah. you know what are you doing no matter what i'm saying problem mm -hmm. catastrophe crisis no matter what yeah. god mm -hmm. is in control mm -hmm. that's key yes, that, 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 that's so central to, to have god in control yes I, I and the somebody... second the second oh, secret, ahead, yeah uh -huh. Uh, the, sec the second secret that I have, when you have a problem or worries or something, you need to pick a verse mm -hmm. that you love. Mm -hmm. And when the worries go inside, you say the word. You say the verse. Say you the say verse. the verse. Yes. Uh, no matter, 1,000 times, mm -hmm. no matter. Mm -hmm. You need to repeat it and yeah. repeat it. And then your flesh understand. What are you talking about? Yes. The fear goes and you say, oh, yes, God has the control. Yeah, yeah. It, that reminds me of how, how when God called Jeremiah, uh, not Jeremiah, uh, Joshua, Joshua to the ministry mm -hmm. to follow Moses. You know, everybody's yes. looking at Jer Joshua. You know, we know what Moses did. What are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And the first yeah. thing God told him was to meditate on God's yes. word. Yes, right. right. And meditate, to my understanding, not only means just thinking about it, but it means saying it out yes. loud. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. It yes. means reciting it. Yes, repeating it. Repeating it, repeating it. And so yeah, it's a good defense.
Yes. A very good defense mechanism, it really is. Really well, and when you good. look at how um, Jesus combated Satan in the temptation, yes. right? What did he do? He quoted scripture. Right. Yes. And I mean, exactly what you have said. You know, there's two things that you said I thought was key is one, God chose you, mm -hmm. right? Because God chose you for the specific place that you're in. It's not a surprise to him where you're at. It's not the surprise of the worry that you have. Um, it's just the matter of how we're going to deal with it from there. But understanding that God chose you, that means that God has already equipped you too. Yes. And he's already given you the tools, even the people around you, yes. all, all the atmosphere in the situation. Um, and then, yes, the, the scripture, having those and memorizing those small ones. I remember when I went into basic training, you know, into the military and a friend gave me a, um, a, a, a scripture to memorize. And it was, you know, 2 Timothy 1, 7. And it's the, you know, mm -hmm. for God has not given me a spirit of fear, but mm -hmm. a power of love yes, and a sound yes. mind. And I quoted that clear through basic training, even today, oh, wow. you know, when I get into those situations where, where my mind starts to worry and starts to fear, like that yes. you know, immediately oh, comes yes. up. Excellent. And then I remember, yes. God, you have always been good. You have always been faithful. Yes. You will deliver me out of this too. Yes. You know, I heard a minister once say, you, you got to remember that God did not say, come unto me, all ye who labor, and I will give you a nervous breakdown. <laughs> he said, I will give you rest. Yes. And he put the emphasis on mm -hmm. the word rest. Right. What about people that are workaholics yeah. and they can never turn their mind off? Yes. Yes. How do you get them to come to the place of mm. rest? Yes. So they won't worry, you know? Yeah. You have to work and you, at it. <laughs> and you need to learn that. Yeah, you have Yeah, to. you need to learn yeah. because the people say, may, yeah, maybe you know that um, before you born. No, you need yes. to learn. You need to <laughs> teach your brain <laughs> to right. do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of intentional work. You just... Uh, you have to reprogram yourself, yes. so to say. Yeah. In essence, that's what it is. Yeah, that's yes, what it is. Yes. Yeah. I think, say, I think a lot, or it can be, I'm not saying every t case, but it kind of goes back to the same thing where there's a hurt or a wound from the past yeah. that they're trying to avoid. Yeah, yeah. And work just happens to be their drug, their way of escape. Mm -hmm. Isn't that yeah. something? And not yeah. having to sit down and really have to face that. And so if they can keep as busy as they can do, do as many things as they can, uh, always be doing something, then their, their mind can't go on the thing that the Lord really wants to deal with yeah. because Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. Yes. So if we're going to do the things to avoid all that, you know, we're not giving him everything that he really wants. He, he came to, he's like, I'll take that and I'm going to give you <laughs> some <laughs> awesome righteousness, healing, joy, Jeez, peace, and, and yeah. And so I believe that's a major aspect of it too, but then really kind of goes along with what you guys were discussing also in, in Philippians 4, where it talks about dwell on these things. Yes. Take you, you prayer, prayer and thankfulness, in prayer and thankfulness, dwell on the things that are good, that are pure, that are lovely, that are praiseworthy, admirable. Uh, all these things, we're in control. We get to be in control of what we dwell on. Mm -hmm. And that, when we do that, there's a promise that goes with it. It says, the God of peace mm -hmm. will guard your hearts and your mind. Yeah. So um, that's a major part of, like, you, we got to control. Take those thoughts captive. Control what we're dwelling on. We're taking that scripture, dwelling on that, and letting that transform us so that we have the lens of the victory of Jesus. Excellent. in that situation. Excellent. We, we need to explain something to the audience that maybe the persons think about pastor, they think that we don't have problems. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, so maybe the persons yeah. think about yeah. with, the pastor doesn't have problem with <laughs> their guys or children yeah. or something. In, uh, in 2017, my son had a bad accident very, very bad accident, and he have um, a liver lesion type four, mm. and I was with him at the hospital that w um, was in Puerto Rico. We was in Puerto Rico to preach, and we went with us, and he have a very, very bad accident. And I am at the room with him. I am a nurse too. Oh, okay. and I am reading the, <laughs> I am reading the um, monitor. Uh -huh. And I am a nurse, and I say something bad is happened. And I went to the nurse and say, "You come with me because you need to read the monitor." When she saw the monitor, she began to to shout, "Doctor, doctor, 
church. Mm -hmm. He is dying. He is dying. And I stand in front of him with another pastor. And I'm like that. And you say, how? Mm -hmm. Your son is dying. And you are not crying or something. I am saying, I refuse to dub in my God. I refuse to dub in my God. Mm -hmm. And I am praying. And because when that happened, I hear the voice of God. Mm -hmm. And God told me, don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Peace, Estrella. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because nobody going to die in that accident. Oh, okay. And mm -hmm. I am repeating the promise, the promise that God mm -hmm. have to me mm -hmm. or bring to me. And the, the rooms was with many, many doctors. Yes. They are working with him. Mm -hmm. And I am like that. Oh, and one okay. person said to me, you are the mother. I say, yes. What happened to you? Oh, I have my God with me, and I have a promise. And he told me, no, die, no, no that in that problem. And you need to be still in the word of God. He talked to you, you need to still in that word that God gives you. Excellent. Very good. Right on time, too. We've got to take a break, and we'll be back. And I'd like to turn the conversation to the topic of temptation. Dealing with temptation. Stay with us. You won't, you won't want to miss this. We'll be right back. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. All right, we're back. And uh, well, let's turn our attention now to the subject of temptation. We got a letter in about this. And gentlemen, lady, I would like to see what your feelings are about how, how you would counsel on this one. This uh, viewer says... I really want to live a Christian life, but it is so hard for me to say no to temptation. Now, they don't say what the temptation is. Uh, too often, I find myself doing the wrong things, and I feel so badly about it afterwards. So that's when the guilt sets in, of course. Um, I, I do, you know, how do I get strong enough to say no to my desires? Who wants to tackle that first? How do I say no? To my desires. That, that, that speaks to the works All of the right. flesh. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's do it. <laughs> well, I think a lot of times if people are so stuck in that, that there can be a spiritual aspect of this going on too, where there's a demonic spirit, unclean spirit that's mm -hmm. really trying to pull them mm -hmm. into that time after time. And similar to what we've talked about in the past it's like there's there's a reason that that's there and so i usually go through and explore like well how did that spirit get there in the mm -hmm. first place or uh, maybe it's just that original the first time that they sin maybe uh maybe it's a, a trauma or something that you know a lot of times people have gone through trauma in their childhood or sexual trauma and then and then they have in their adult life, mm -hmm. they have this temptation of sexual sin that, that goes along happen. with it. And so there's a need for the healing yes. of their heart, but mm -hmm. then there's also the need to command these spirits to leave mm -hmm. because Jesus came mm -hmm. to set them free. Yes, He came to yes. proclaim yes. release to the yes. captives, freedom to the prisoners. And that's actually for Christians, you know. <laughs> Jesus yeah. said, deliverance is the children's bread. Yes, it is. And so that's part of our, it doesn't mean there's anything like terrible about you as a person or as a Christian. It's just we need to engage in mm -hmm. that with the Lord and let him give us the fullness of the ministry that Jesus came to do. And mm -hmm. that includes freedom. Mm -hmm. And then when we get free, then it's easier to, because to, freedom is free to walk in righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. 
You want to add to that? Yeah, that's 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 really good. I I agree wholeheartedly wholeheartedly with that. And I was just thinking also an author, one of my favorite authors is Neil Anderson, and he does mm -hmm. a lot of writing about breaking the bondage. Mm -hmm. uh, the, mm -hmm. bondage the bondage breaker, I believe, is, is yeah. one of the yeah. books. Several, books. Several yeah. books like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would encourage anyone dealing with something of that nature uh, to uh, really read his books. And they're based on scripture, so mm -hmm. he brings mm -hmm. a lot of scriptural passages uh, out as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, all that's good. I'm mean, at our church. We have a deliverance ministry too. It's yeah. uh, we don't advertise it a whole lot, but it's one of the hidden gems within our church, is what I call it. <laughs> um, but you know, there is scriptural aspects to all that that you guys are um, approaching. We know that Paul um, he says that he had to beat his flesh into submission. Um, sometimes the 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 side I want to address is the practical, you know, because there's the extreme to the just whatever and. Um, Accountability, accountability, accountability. Yeah. Um, find somebody that you truly trust. Find somebody that's not afraid to tell you that you're wrong, um, that can do it in love and not in a hurt way, that can walk this journey with you. Yeah. That's a believer also that loves the Lord with all their heart. Um, it is not good for, for man to be alone. That's not always applied to just husband and wife. It is just a, along the way. Um, Paul had lots of people, even Peter, and in times where he went astray on, on some of the stuff, Paul had to harshly address them in public, even because he was uh, leading the body astray. So, you know, it can deal with be sins, it can be just anything, but accountability, accountability, accountability. I can't say it enough. Um, if you have that accountability partner that you truly trust and make the walk together, um, that God can speak through both of you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the Bible is the book of instructions that you need to see when you have a question about it. Um, about temptation, Matthew 26, 41 say, watch and pray. Jesus mm -hmm. say, watch and pray. They may not enter into temptation because the flesh is weak. Mm -hmm. And when you saw the Bible, you uh, found... Uh, Jesus praying 40 days, mm -hmm. and then when the devil uh, come to, mm -hmm. them, uh, to the temptation, um, he do all things what he need to do with the Bibles, but he was praying before. Yes, and was. sometimes the, the people think when you pray, the devil is very, very far. Oh, no. When, when you found in the Bible, um, God was praying 40 days and 40 nights, and, and mm -hmm. the devil is behind, uh, beside him. Mm -hmm. And you need to see what the Bible says. Watch and pray. They pray the, your praying time is very important when you want to um, be victorious over the temptation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Very good. Let's move to another subject here, and uh, this one tends to garner a lot of attention, and that is the issue of tithing. Mm -hmm. Tithing, a tenth. Um, well, some people say that doesn't mean a tenth. <laughs> so, uh, but in any event, the, uh, here is, uh, what does Jesus say about tithing? Is it really 10%? Also, how much? And where are we to give our tithe? And lastly on that, do we pay on the net or the gross? Mm -hmm. Well, let's first of all take up the issue. Do we tithe or don't we tithe? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. If you want to be blessed, yes. you tithe. Yeah. Yes. If you don't want to be blessed, you don't tithe. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> so, and not just tithing, like yeah. um, I extend that into all giving. Mm -hmm. um, giving of yourself, your time, mm -hmm. um, just yes. even That's your correct. other resources that you have, the gifts and talents that God has given you. If you want God to be blessed and present in your life, then you give out, out of your abundance that he has given you. And if you don't give, then he's not going to give back because you're already full. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I am uh, I, um, with Pastor. Uh, you need to, to tie. Yeah. Th this is a very important secret. <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I um, teach to, the, to our um, church. It's a secret. Mm -hmm. And God showed to the people if you want to be blessing, you need. 
to give to God yeah. your tithe. And when you tithe, you are open the yeah. windows of the heaven right. to your house, to your finances, mm -hmm. to all things that you need. And I was in Venezuela, mm -hmm. very, very hard times. And sometimes we don't have uh, food to bring to uh, people who comes to our house. Mm -hmm. uh, let me explain. I have time to do that very quickly. Um, I have coffee, I have a sugar, but, and I have um, to make arepas, but I don't have um, egg, only one egg, and I bring to my visitor. And I, I say to my husband, go with the visitor, to another place when I need time to pray because I don't have food for him. Yeah. And I go on my knees and I say, God, remember my ties. Yeah. Remember, remember, yeah. I give to you. Mm -hmm. I give to you and I need you give me back because I have that person in my, in my house uh -huh. and I don't, uh -huh. I don't have money to buy food and I don't have food. And I am praying and crying and crying, and somebody knocked my door, mm -hmm. and the men say, oh, "What happened, Pastor? In here? No, nothing happened. Yes, Pastor, something is happening uh, here yeah. because God showed me you on your knees crying, but God doesn't show me what you need, and I am here because I yes, I hear the voice of God mm -hmm. give." 50,000 um, money of Venezuela is $100 give to your pastor. And I say, oh my God. <laughs> and he, he bring me, oh my God, it's a, it's a pack like that <laughs> of money. <laughs> and my, my husband come back to the house very quickly. And I say, I, I tell you that go with, with, the, with the pastor. And he say, I put my money back. And I say, I need to, I need to show you something. I, I put the money like that over wow. the bed. And he put his hands in the pocket and bring another pack of money. <laughs> 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 and he say, this is the God that I have. Yeah. Because yeah. when you bring to God, he bring back again bring back more yes. that yes. you bring yes. to him. Yes. That's right. Excellent. Yeah. Exactly. That's the we point. Very little time left. Want to chime yeah. in? One of you know, I would say there's an aspect of of covenant that goes along with this. It's like we've been invited into a, a covenant with God, yeah. and that require yeah. He's offering of His resources, mm -hmm. and He's also asking of our resources. Mm -hmm. So. In that covenant making, there's an exchange of gifts and exchange of resources, mm -hmm. and that's part of it. Yes. And yeah. whether you're on the 10% side or, or you can give 20 or 30 or whatever it is, you know, that, that you, you need to give of what God asks of you. Yeah. Very quickly, we got less than a minute left. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it certainly goes back to the Old Testament, uh, Malachi chapter 3. Mm -hmm and um, other passages as well, that we give the first fruits mm -hmm. yes. uh, as an offering, yeah. as a blessing, because yeah. we've been blessed already. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's an opportunity. And as you give, it's just amazing to find out how well God gives back to yeah. you. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah, we sing yeah. a song in the black church, the more you give, yeah. the more he gives back to yes. you. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. it's the one thing that God himself yeah. says, test me in this, yeah. in giving. That's, That's right. right. So. That's right. Yeah, We're all out of time. Gentlemen, thank you, ladies. <laughs> thank you very much. We'll be back again next week with more of your questions to provide biblical solutions. Till then, I'm Bill Harris. Bye-bye for now. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ 
Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com. <laughs>